One, two, three, four. Here's a really straightforward 12 bar blues. The Albert King version is in the key of C, which is great for the guitar, and it features Steve Cropper on another guitar, and he's got a riff that's well worth getting under our fingers. It's a 12 bar blues, like any self-respecting blues, and it uses just three chords. Now in the blues, it's very common for the major chord to turn into a seven. So the, although we're in C, my C is gonna be C7. And the chords I want are C, that's chord one, C, D, E, F is chord four, and G is chord five. So one, four, and five, that's how I'm gonna to refer to them in the sequences. And each of them is gonna be made into a seven. So look, if we play an E7 shape barred on the first fret, that's F7. And then same thing barred on the third fret, well, that's G7. Those are all the chords we need. In a moment, we'll look at some more interesting shapes that are just gonna elevate this a little bit, and make it a bit more jazz, a bit more blues perhaps but for now let's just sketch out the 12 bars the first four bars in the blues is essentially chord one sometimes and it happens in this song there's a variation where we move to chord four for the second bar and back so C F C C one four one one I'm going to Kansas City Kansas City here I come that's how that is We'll look at the strumming style in a moment, but for now, that's it. If you keep the third finger uh, on the fifth string here, then when you go to the F7, you don't have to move that finger at all. That makes it easy to get to that next one. I'm going to Kansas City, Kansas City, here I come. Now the next line is exactly the same, except we move to chord four on the first bar. I'm going to Kansas City, Kansas City, here I come. Okay, so so far we've got C, F, C, C, F, F, C, C. That is one, four, one, one, four, four, one, one. That's very typical of the blues. And we finish off with what we call the turnaround. That's the last four bars that bring us back to the beginning. We get to chord five, which is G7. They got a lot of crazy women. I didn't write the lyrics. They got a lot of crazy women there. Down to F7. I'm gonna get me one. Now it's very common in the blues end up on chord five, in this case G7, to take us back to the beginning, but this time we don't. We just stay on the chord of C. They got a lot of crazy women there. I'm gonna get me one. Second verse is exactly the same. Well, I'm standing on the corner, 12 sweet and vine. We got some horns coming in on the original. I'm gonna be standing on the corner, 12th Street and Vine. Oh, with my Kansas City baby and a bottle of Kansas City wine. That's the first two verses done, and then we have a slightly different verse. Uh, but let's look at the strumming style. Now this song is swung, that is to say, instead of one and two and three and four and, the ands, the upstrums for us, are delayed. One and two and three and four and. And you might visualize it like this. We have really an underlying sense of triplets. So instead of the beat being divided into two, it's divided into three. da ka da da ka da da ka da da ka da You actually hear a little bit of that in the drums. da ka da da ka da da ka da da ka da And with swung quavers, the first two thirds belongs to the down strum and the last third to the up strum. Now, you might not really hear the up strum, but if I make a deliberate attempt to bring the up strum out, That's the kind of sound we're gonna get. Okay, um, the other thing to say is I'm actually creating a crisper sound by muting. If I have a bar chord, it's enough just to relax the bar and then instantly the chord shape is, is killed, if you like, that sound just dies uh, and that mutes. But I'm a belt and braces, I'm also gonna bring the heel of my strumming hand down onto the strings, just to make it really crisp.
Okay, so that's the strumming style. It's a very typical kind of swing strumming style. The other thing to say at this point is that rather than just playing these sevens, C7, F7, G7, here are some slightly more advanced but more bluesy, more interesting shapes that we can use. Now for the C7, we've got a C here on the third fret of the fifth string and another one on the first fret of the second string. So we're just repeating notes here. Instead of playing a C there on the second string, we can put a D there, that's the nine. So root three, flat seven and nine. That means refingering it this way with the first finger on the second fret of the fourth string. The other fingers obviously are on the third frets of their respective strings, like that. So that's a C nine. You could also mush that third finger and include the top string at the third fret. That gives you the fifth of the chord, a G, but you know, that's one way of doing that. So C9 rather than C7. And if you wanted to experiment, we'll move it up here for a G chord and here for an F chord. I mean, it means you're gonna be moving up and down the neck quite a lot. Standing on the corner, 12th Street and Vine. That's kind of a long way, but it works. Um, the other shape I want to show you is this one. I'll show you it for the G. So instead of G7 like this, I'm going to put my first finger on the third fret of the bottom string, my second finger on the third fret of the fourth string, my third finger is going to be on the fourth fret of the third string, and that creates a little G7. If you've uh, seen my intro to jazz chord shapes, uh, we begin with this kind of stuff. And then my little finger's free to play an extension. Fifth fret of the second string gives me a 13, G13. And if I lay that across the top string as well, well, I also get a nine there. So it's a 13 optionally with a nine. The, the names don't matter too much, but you can hear there's just a bit more bluesy color there. I've got my, my seven and then this extra note that's an E there on the fifth fret of the second string. And I can play that for the F7 too. So that's now F13. Obviously, if I move it all the way up here, well, then I've got C13. So you could mix and match. You could have the C chord here and then the G and F chords here. C13, G9, F9, or alternatively, C9, which means that the G13 and the F13 are in easier reach. Okay, so if we have a verse with those shapes instead, we're gonna get this. I'm going to Kansas City, Kansas City, here I come. I'm going to Kansas City, Kansas City, here I come. They got a lot of crazy women there and I'm gonna get me one. Okay, instant blues. All right, we'll go on. Now, the third verse, we have these, what are called stops. Well, I might take a plane, I might take a train, but if I have to walk, I'm going just the same. I'm going up Kansas City, Kansas City, here I come. And then it's just the same as the previous verses. They got some crazy little women there and I'm gonna get me one. Uh, the only thing here is that the first four bars stay on C. Well, I might take a plane, I might take a train, but if I have to walk, I'm going just the same what I did. Okay, so that's the only kind of variation we have there. Following that, if you follow the original recording, we have what's called a shout chorus where we have the horns going bam, 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 down. Bam, bam, bam. Again, we stay on chord one. Bam, 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 bam. When we have a playthrough in a moment, I've actually recorded these for a backing track. Lay down. Bam, 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 bam. And that leads us back into. Well, I might take a plane. Yeah, I might take a train we get that shout chorus again uh, and that's pretty much all there is we just need to look at the intro and the outro
Now, in the intro, Albert King plays his guitar solo to kick us off. It's four bars, essentially the last four bars of the form, which is G7, F7, and then two bars of C7. We squeeze in a little G7 right at the end to bring us into the first verse. I'm going to Kansas City. That's how we start that. That's easy enough. And the outro is, again, the last four bars of the form. Uh, he's singing anyway at the end of the verse. So the very last verse, we get, They got a lot of crazy women there, and I'm going to get me one. And he just repeats that. They got a lot of crazy women there, and I'm going to get me one. Then the horns come in for the last one, and he sings. They got a lot of crazy women there, and I'm gonna get me one. So we've got two little things to look at here. This riff. Now what happens here is we've got notes on the fourth string, starting on the fifth fret, to the fourth fret, to the third fret, to the second fret, alternating with notes on the fifth fret of the third string. So I'm gonna use well, I should probably put my little finger on the third string, otherwise I'm going to have a bit of a stretch. I've got my third finger on the fourth string, little finger on the third string. So five, 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 fourth string, third string, fourth string. Then I'm going to do the fourth fret. I'm going to use my second finger. Staying on the fifth fret of the third string. Now the third fret of the fourth. Moving down finally to the second fret. Okay. He got a lot of crazy women there, and I'm gonna get me one. Is what he does. And he finishes off with this, which is essentially the second, third, and fourth strings of a C9 chord. So if you have a C9, like this or like this, I'm putting my third finger across there. Uh, but two frets higher, so D9, and then D flat, and then C. And he has the luxury, obviously, there's a second guitar and a bass guitar, so he doesn't need to play the roots. You could do if you're playing this on your own, obviously, that makes a lot of sense, but he just plays. And that's the end of it. So the whole of the outro, they got a lot of crazy women here, and I'm gonna get me one. Once more. They got a lot of crazy women there, and I'm gonna get me one. <laughs> That's the end of the song. All right, let's look at this Steve Cropper riff because it's really worth a look. Now, this riff that Steve Cropper plays is also played on the bass and in the left hand of the piano, so it's this really solid beat underneath the melody and everything else that's happening, and it's this. Now, he's playing the root of whatever chord, the C chord, the F chord, or the G chord. Then he's going down a tone, two frets worth, and then one semitone, one frets worth. So you could do it here. C, B flat, A, B flat. That's essentially what it is. Okay, and you can hear those swing quavers. So a different note for each beat. One, two, three, four. So we've got C, B flat, A, back up to B flat, but I'm pretty sure he wouldn't do it there with an open string. Let's look at this instead. If I use my first finger on the third fret of the fifth string, I'm gonna bring my little finger to the sixth fret. It's not so bad if you check your thumb. If you haven't got your thumb too far up, you've got plenty of room to move here. First finger on the third fret of the fifth string, sixth fret on the bottom string for the little finger, and then the fifth fret, you can play that with your third finger. Now, I, don't, I never use a pick, so I'm using my thumb. I might, I might use a, a picking finger on the fifth string, and then the thumb on the bottom string. That kind of a thing. One, two, three, four. That's for the C. Now, for the F, then, we're just going to move that whole thing up a string. Okay. Dun, 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 it's the same thing. 
So the first line of the verse would be the C once, then the F, and then C twice. Okay, the second line, two lots of F. And back to C. Okay, now for the G, you're just going to move the F version up two frets. Okay, and you're going to play that, but there's a twist. There's a very slight twist, and it's quite clever. If you do exactly the same on the G chord that you've done on the F chord, or indeed the C chord, where after you've got down to that note, you come up one fret, what's going to happen is this. G, F, E, F. You're ending the G riff on an F, and you're beginning the F riff on an F as well. So you've got the same note twice. It just feels a bit clunky. Do you hear that? G, F, E, F, F. Just having the same note, it's just a bit kind of, if I play it, a little bit ungainly. It doesn't really flow. So what he actually does is this. G, F, E. Now he goes right back to G. That takes us very nicely onto the F. So there at bar nine. Okay, that's the only kind of little kink in the whole thing. All right, let's just have that once through. Up to the F. Down to C. G. And that's it. All right, let's have a playthrough. One, two, three, four. <laughs> I'm going up Kansas City, Kansas City, here I come. I'm going up Kansas City, Kansas City, here I come. They got a lot of crazy women there, and I'm going to get me one. I'm going to be standing on the corner, 12 Street and Vine. I'm gonna be standing on the corner, 12 Street and Vine. Oh, with my Kansas City baby and a bottle of Kansas City wine. All right, here we go. Well, I might take a plane, I might take a train, but if I have to walk, I'm going just the same. I'm going to Kansas City, Kansas City, here I come. They got some crazy little women there and I'm gonna get me one Might take a train, but if I have to walk, I'm going just the same. I'm going to Kansas City, Kansas City, here I come. They got a lot of crazy women there, and I'm gonna get you on. 